All right, getting everything packed for Montana uh, Prairie Dog Hunt and vacation. Uh, this whole case and everything inside of here ended up weighing about 45 pounds. I have to be under 50 pounds for some TSA. If not, then I'll have to pay extra. So here's the CZ. I have the rifles only sling since I'm going to be carrying it in the sling. I got my bolt over there. I got to take off my bolt because if I don't, then it could break. And then I got my tripod for my camera. I'm going to be, I plan on doing some, uh, doing some video for you guys. And then I have my shooting tripod with me. This is going to be my, um, my carry on luggage. And then my Armageddon gear, bead filled game changer that I'm going to be taking with me and my, um, my carry on. Um, got some ammo right here and I got my L3i breakfast plate, super light since I'm going to be carrying it around on that tripod. Uh, my Coltac bino harness that I can put my bino as range finder, fix it sticks. Oh yeah, a rifleman patch from Appleseed a few years ago. Uh, my Apex Binos with the reticle, my Garmin Zero, so I can check my velocity um, since it's going to be a little bit cooler over there than here in Texas. So. The atmosphere is just going to be different. And uh, and then my camera. Uh, TSA does require me to have a lock on every on every hole that is that my um, case has. So. I bought these from Amazon, it's Amazon Basics, and I can set the code, and it seems pretty secure. Kestrel Vortex Razor um, range finder, that's going to be essential, so I'm going to need to find out how far I need to shoot these prairie dogs from. Uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. This is a, uh, this is not a Pelican case, this is a Plano case that I got from my wife years ago, like five years ago. Super nice and durable. I've had it for many years. It's got wheels so I can lug it around. It's similar to a Plano case, um, but just a little bit different brand. Um, I've used it a lot in traveling. And yep, let's do this trip. So we are in, um, I think we're in Montana or Idaho at the moment. Um, we uh, landed in Spokane last night and then we have about a, uh, today we left from, from uh, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we're headed to Libby, Montana. So it was about a three hour drive. Um, but yeah, we're just looking at beautiful mountains. It's a overcast day, so hopefully tomorrow when I go prairie dog hunting, it's gonna be a little bit better weather. weather. Um, but man, this is so different than Texas. I just love this uh, this place, and I've been here a couple of times, and um, it never gets old. This is where we're gonna be staying for the past, oh, for the next, <laughs> for the next week and a half. <laughs> gonna be hunting in this little valley right here. Here is the valley. There's the cabinet mountains? Yes. Uh, but we can't see it right now. Yeah, <laughs> tomorrow morning hopefully it'll be. Yeah. This is my brother-in-law, Philip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is where we're staying. Oh, okay. So that's one thing to be aware of. If you see big Yeah. Down, see, there's nothing there now. It looks like nobody's there, so I wouldn't be afraid to shoot. Um, yeah, well, I make sure I, I try to um, not aim like yeah. like towards the and house, obviously. The and, and, 
Yeah. Aim towards the ground. Wow, there were four of them. Uh, there was four, there was four, three or four over here. Yeah, right here, here around the where the, See, right here is where one's been going in and out. And okay. Right there. And then there's a hole there. So, so this wow. is where we were shooting at the other day. Okay. And then where he's at, uh -huh. that's where. Oh, yeah. Sneebo, you found and another you hole. See, there's spots all around here where it looks like they're starting to dig around. Okay. Well, he knows it went in there. Wow. Once in a while, they'll find a tunnel where it, they're just digging and they're only under the ground a little bit. Uh huh. And they're cornered. Uh -huh. And they'll dig them out and kill them. Wow. Yeah. So, it's, Philip, can you tell me a little bit, a little bit about like how the, um, these prairie dogs kind of ruin the the field and like like how it affects the um, you know when you. Well, mainly what it is, it, they make these dirt mounds, and then when you're mowing, you have to watch that you don't mow into them, because mm -hmm. it'll ruin the knives, and then they eat around the area, mm -hmm. and little by little, the alfalfa dies off. And yeah, and then you can, you can ruin your equipment yeah, because of the dirt mounds. And this is all, uh, this is all hay. Yep. Um, yeah. Part of this upper end I didn't mow this year because I figured I'll save it for grazing for the cows okay i kind of move it around one year i'll i'll mow a section and then the next year i'll leave that for grazing and mow a different spot so cool these are the old holes old gopher holes here's, there's a hole. yeah there's a hole. that has a spider web in it so obviously not easy mm -hmm. and then see all these see all oh these yeah they are stir up the soil oh and that's see, bad a dirt mound there oh yeah that's bad for you machine so it takes away from the quality of the hay and, yeah and now weeds grows there because they killed off the alfalfa well i'm gonna be having some fun yeah <laughs> hey there penny every time i use the loader they're really filling up the stars see over on the other side of the drive, you see that green metal post, and then there's like one gopher sitting up right. They're like all over from here over to the chickens and over uh -huh. to this fence line and then down. Okay. So sometimes in the in the mornings or, or any time in the day, depends what kind of day, they'll be anywhere. Along the fence here. line. Do you see the end of the irrigation line? Yes. Uh-huh. See, from the end of the irrigation line over to here. Uh-huh. Right in here because it doesn't get watered. Okay. See where it's watered so wet, it'll go into their tunnels. Uh huh. Yes. They don't like that. So they they're they stay away from it. Doesn't reach all the way, so they're mostly right along here. And then this lane that goes down, they might be down on beyond the irrigation line another. Okay. 50 feet and somebody or lives over there, right? Yeah. There's okay. A house right there. I'll make and sure. Yeah. I'll make sure. Way be down careful. there, you can. I don't know if you faintly can see a little building between the trees. Okay. But Benjamin Girard lives in there. Got There's it. three houses along inside the trees. Okay. There. So this is an Airbnb? Yes, oh, this the, is the one that Jay Bontina rented. Wow. Oversee. Yeah, there's, there's, see that go from Yes, oh, I see that one. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what to think. I, I should, I've never asked Jay Bontina. If there's absolutely nobody around, I sometimes have shot over there uh -huh. um, when I'm out here. Okay. Um, I'm I see sure that gopher standing over there. Yeah, there's two of them yeah. standing there. And then those first trees, they're going to be in there. Uh -huh. But that's that neighbor's property, so okay. probably don't go other side of the fence. Sounds good. Yeah, there's another one over towards the chickens. Uh, oh, I see it. <laughs> All right, this is our view. Next week and a half. Here's the dog. Yep. He's going to be going hunting with us. <laughs>